Hey everybody, welcome to the Cylinder Lab. In this video, we're going to be installing Oracle Linux 7 and Oracle Database 12C version 12.1.0.1 .1 Standard Edition 1 on VMware ESXi 6. This is part 3. Earlier in part 1, we created the VM and installed the operating system. Then in part two, we prepared the server for Oracle. And now in part three, we'll actually install Oracle. Okay, we're almost ready to begin, but first, how about a little pep talk? You will encounter errors. It's guaranteed, even if you're doing the most basic installation there is, you're going to encounter problems. Even when you think that you have done everything to prepare, you've taken every precaution to prepare, there's always something that you did wrong. There's always something that you forgot. You're going to have errors. Be patient. Don't get discouraged. Another thing that you should keep in mind before you try to install Oracle is ask yourself two questions. Number one, when was this product developed and released? In our case, we're doing Oracle Database 12C 12.1.0.1 Standard Edition 1 and that was released in mid-2013. Okay, mid-2013. Question number two, which operating systems existed at that time in mid-2013? Certainly not Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. Certainly not Oracle Linux 7. RHEL 7 was released in mid-2014. So it's almost guaranteed that you're going to have problems and complications when you try to install on top of an operating system that didn't even exist when the product was being developed and tested. So be prepared for, for some extra bumps in the road. Let's go ahead and get started. So just a quick word about the error that we're seeing here. It says the environment does not meet the minimum requirements. And uh, so if you have a look at the log file, it will say supported OS validator reference data is not available for verifying the prerequisites on this operating system. So that's because at the time that this Oracle software was released, Oracle Linux 7 didn't exist yet. There's a file called cvu underscore prereq.xml and I recommend you have a look at it. If you do a grep for operating underscore system, you'll see the operating system that it is conscious of or aware of or expecting and uh, RHEL 7 or Oracle Linux 7 or none of them are there. So if you go on the internet and Google what to do in this scenario, there's different people saying different things, but uh, rather than beating your head up against the wall, you could just click the button to continue, which is what I did.
This problem is well known and well documented. What you need to do is go to your Oracle home, empty out this directory here. We're going to modify this file and before you do it's a good idea to make a backup copy. So that's what I'm showing here. Then what you need to do is use an editor to go into this file, go down to line 176 and replace this line with that line. Then go down to line 279 and 280, replace these two lines with this, and then finally replace these lines here with this. Save your changes, exit, go back to the Oracle installer, and retry.
After Oracle is installed, you should go to the database installation guide and have a look at this chapter. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to stop Oracle. I'm going to show you my environment variables. I'm now going to show you how to start the Oracle database. I'm going to start by showing you the Oracle environment variables set. And now I'll demonstrate how to start the listener. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to open up ports 1521 and 5500. I'll start by showing you that these are listening. There's one and there's the other. Now I'm going to show you that the firewall is running. I'm going to show you what is open already. Now we're going to open up those ports. Now we're going to do a reload and do list all again. Now that port 5500 is open, I want to demonstrate to you that we can bring this up in the browser. And there we go. Well, that's it everyone. I hope you found this informative and please check back often for more videos. This video is free of advertisements. If you enjoyed what you watched, please click subscribe, the like button, or leave a comment. Why? To improve my rank. You see, YouTube uses all kinds of factors to determine where my video ends up in the search results. Thank you.